Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sandy Barua, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Detroit Regional Chamber. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, is it me or did we just do this? Well, obviously we were just here in September and I want to thank all of you for not just being with us in the fall and bearing with us and sticking with us through the uniqueness that was the COVID pandemic. We all had to bob and weave and adapt and certainly the chamber and the conference is no different, but I'm absolutely delighted to have all of you back again in May. And we're, so we're back as where we're supposed to be the week after Memorial Day, all is right in the world. Now, as you all know, this event is unique. And I'm not saying that because of you know, marketing purposes or something like that. This is a truly unique experience. No other state in the nation has a statewide event that annually convenes leaders from the business community, the philanthropic community, the political community, the education community, to talk over multiple days and do something about the challenges and opportunities before their state. This is truly unique. And we at the Detroit Regional Chamber truly view ourselves as stewards of an incredibly important Michigan asset. And as roles, as, as, as being stewards, I want to thank all of you for being stewards of this incredibly important event and convening along with us. So it is May. Yesterday it was 80 degrees. Today it's going to be 50 something. Um, when we get on the ferries Friday morning, apparently it's supposed to be in the 40s, so it definitely is May. Uh, there is no ice in the water, so that's good. We're at the Grand Hotel, as it's the way it's supposed to be, so it seems a little normal, doesn't it? I mean, you know, are we back to normal? Is this the moment where we can kind of get on with our lives? Probably not. Right, you know, as we all know, you know, we are a ways away from being normal, and we don't even know what normal is going to eventually look like. We are obviously still dealing with the pandemic. Cases are going down after a little spike. Fortunately, COVID doesn't pack the kick that it did when it really kicked our asses in 2020 and 2021, but we still want to be cautious. So that's why we are still using the, uh, the clear health pass. That is why we're still making masks available and encouraging people to mask up, especially in the theater and that very crowded hallway on your, on, your, on your way in. And even though it hasn't been universally applauded by everyone in the state, I am exceptionally proud of how our organization and you, our loyal attendees, have handled COVID and have taken this seriously because we are all here for each other and we're all here to do good for one another and being respectful of others in terms of making sure that we do what we can to ensure people's health and safety is certainly top of mind. And should you feel ill, our COVID hotline is back. In fact, my understand that it was just recently used. So 313-550-7827 is the number you should call uh, if you need a COVID test or if you feel like you're feeling ill. Now, as I mentioned, normal is a ways away. We have a vast number of our employees who are still at home in their pajamas, and they seem intent to stay there. Businesses, uh, we are all struggling with how, when, if to return our employees to the office. We're still struggling to find out what people want, including our customers. And of course, we are in an environment where the level of disinformation, sometimes purposeful, you know, has grown to really crisis levels in our country, and Michigan is no exception. And we can't even agree on a basic set of facts a lot of the times. For example, there were no microchips in the vaccines. You know, there, you know, there was, you know, at the end of the day, very little debate of who won the 2020 election. We're having trouble agreeing on a set of facts, which is a really dangerous time to be in because we have so many issues that face our society right now. And it can seem overwhelming because frankly, the issues are really serious. 
grounds. We are struggling, rightfully so, with a racial justice awakening. We are uh, ready to deal, hopefully, with this change that might be coming to the Roe versus Wade decision from the 1970s by the Supreme Court, and of course, school shootings. Yesterday was the six month anniversary of the tragedy in Oxford, and we had yet another unspeakable event just a few days ago down in Texas. And these issues and more are taking place at a time when our society is really torn between the two equally important elements that make us Americans. On one side is we the people, the collective spirit of, of America that has you know, prevailed during times of war, during times of crisis. And then of course, don't tread on me. The spirit of the individual, the entrepreneur, the, the, uh, the explorer, both of these elements, we the people, the collective us, and don't tread on me, the individualistic spirit, are both equally valuable parts of the American experience. You can't have one without the other. But right now, we are kind of pegged over as a society on the don't tread on me when we have big problems to solve. That is a challenge for all of us, especially as we come together here at this conference. And no matter where you stand, if you are a Democrat, a Republican, unaffiliated, or just generally pissed off, <laughs> civility lives here and it lives with all of you. And that's one of the things that I'm most proud of, of this convening. No matter who you are, what leader, uh, what organization you lead, what your political views are, if you live in an urban area, rural area, the east part of the state, the west part of the state, we all come here with a spirit of civility. We come here to enjoy each other and to learn from each other and frankly, make policy fun. And I wanna thank you all for this very proud tradition that lives in you and lives at this conference, which is civility lives here. And this proud tradition is brought to all of us by a set of amazing, wonderful friends of the Detroit Regional Chamber. First off, leading the way is our friends at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. I want to thank Dan Lepp for everything that he does for us and for our community, and I look forward to having Dan on this stage later in the conference. Also, our Ruby Level sponsors, DTE Energy, Huntington, Piston Sports and Entertainment, Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. And our platinum sponsors include Consumers Energy, Dow, General Motors Company, the Grand Hotel, the MEDC, Michigan Health and Hospital Association, PNC Bank, the Rocket Companies, Strategic Staffing Solutions, and UPS. Please, a round of applause for all of our wonderful sponsors. And of course, it wouldn't be the Mackinac Policy Conference with two longtime partners. Uh, once again, we are proud to be partnered with Detroit Public Television, which makes the proceedings of this conference completely available, free of charge, to anyone in the world. And when I say anyone in the world, we have worldwide views of what happens on this stage, and I'm incredibly proud of that. And I'm especially delighted to welcome Christy McDonald back at the anchor desk in the lobby. And of course, thanks to our hosts here at the magnificent and historic Grand Hotel. And once again, thanks to our friends at Bank of America who are sponsoring our Mackinac Young Leaders uh, Initiative in partnership with Harvard Business School. So thank you to Bank of America. So the theme of this year's conference, and I was just talking with Arne Tellum backstage, and I was just telling him yet again, you know, how thrilled I am with this theme that Arne and I came to very quick uh, agreement and alignment on. We said this is the, the perfect theme 
for the times that we're in uh, right now. And also, I want to add that you know having you know Arn Tellum, Nancy Tellum, and the entire Piston Sports and Entertainment team as partners for this conference has been just an amazing experience. Everything from thought leadership to, to content providing to you know all the things that uh, they have done to make this conference incredibly special. I just want to thank Arn and the Pistons for everything that they've done. It's been fantastic. So this theme, you know, the business community's role in this incredibly polarizing time, you know, this is incredibly important for all of us because it is new territory uh, for, for business. I mean, not long ago, it was unthinkable for the business community to be talking out so publicly in the public square. But from social justice to the integrity of our elections, to access to the ballot box, to promoting vaccines for public safety, the business community has really found itself in, in a new world and frankly with some uncertain footing. When do we speak out? When do we not? Because this is not a role the business community asked for. And, but the business community is responding, one, because it was demanded of the community around them because folks in the community want to know that the businesses that operate in their community care about the community. It was demanded by employees because our employees want to know that they work for and with an organization that cares about the things that, that they care about. Our customers want to know that they're doing business with a company that has the right values. This is new territory. It's beyond, I'm offering a good service at a good price. The rules have changed for business. And hopefully this conference will help us navigate that. And in fact, in light of the drop in public confidence in the government, media, even religious institutions, business is now the de facto top trusted entity in the public square. Again, who would have thunk it? And in this era of extreme disinformation, extreme polarization, it's business leaders who are stepping into the breach to provide level, common sense information to their employees and the community around them. In fact, the Edelman Trust Barometer not only places businesses at the top of the trust index, they have said that business is now core to societal leadership. Again, new territory for the business community. And of course, we have an incredible stable of thought leaders to think through these issues. We have amazing journalists like Ted Koppel and Van Jones. We have an incredible array of sports team owners with deep Michigan ties, all friends of Arn, by the way. He just made one call, and here they are. But they're here not to talk about their win-loss record. They're not here to talk about their sports teams. They're here to talk about their engagement in the community. I'm thrilled to have presidential historian John Meacham here. I'm thrilled to have my friend Camille Lloyd, the executive director of the Gallup Center on Black Voices. And of course, we welcome back our old friend Harold Ford Jr., who's going to navigate us through many of our conversations. And as policy is our middle name, we have plenty of policymakers at the conference this year, including those who are vying to be Michigan's next chief executive. Once again, the Mackinac Conference will use our platform to host a debate, this time for the Republican gubernatorial hopefuls, which will take place Thursday afternoon outside in the Big Tent. And while I am thrilled to welcome this amazing array of speakers that we have assembled for you, uh, this, this conference, and I'm thrilled that the governor is about to take the stage in just a few minutes. I want to thank the most important element and the most important attendees of this conference, and that is you. Our loyal attendees who have made this event so special, so iconic, you have made this a place where policy is fun, but most importantly, you have made this a place and made this gathering a place where civility still lives. Thank you very much.
Please welcome Arne Tellum, Vice Chairman of Piston Sports and Entertainment and Chair of the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. It's an honor to serve as Chairman of this year's Mackinac Policy Conference. It's been quite a year of preparation to get to this point, and I'm excited for a great lineup of featured speakers, panel discussions, and breakout sessions over the next several days. I want to thank Sandy Barua and everyone at the Detroit Regional Chamber for their help, as they have been incredible to work with. I also want to thank my incredible team at the Pistons, who have worked so hard to make this conference successful, so if they're here, Please give them a round of applause. It's been an enjoyable and rewarding experience, but I have to admit, I'll be very happy and relieved when the conference ends on Friday <laughs> and my focus can shift to the upcoming NBA draft. Seven years ago, I arrived in Detroit to embark on a new career. My journey began with a conversation with Pistons owner Tom Gorris and Mark Barnhill, his partner at Platinum Equity. On a blank sheet of paper, they drew a series of concentric circles, one after another. At the center was the Detroit Pistons. The circles represented the many opportunities that radiated outward by utilizing the team as a community asset. The upshot of that meeting was that I joined the Pistons organization as vice chairman and ended my 35-year career as a player agent in Los Angeles. Suddenly, I had a new purpose. I was no longer called a super agent. I was what Tom called a change agent, with a mission focused on executing his vision for the franchise. Tom, in short, wanted to make an impact. Running the organization has enabled me to combine my interest in sports, business, and philanthropy, and work to be impactful in our community. Sports are a great unifier and have been at the forefront in advancing diversity and inclusion. It's the ultimate meritocracy where talent, work ethic, and character are rewarded. Sports unite communities as people of diverse cultures and backgrounds come together to root for their team. And frankly, there are a lot of lessons we can take from sports and implement in our society today. So having spent a lifetime in the industry and serving as your chair for the conference, guess what? You're going to see sports woven into this conference more than in previous years. <laughs> Yesterday's kickoff event at the beautiful Jewel Golf Course brought together Michigan business, government, and civic leaders with some of the most accomplished figures in sports. The purpose was to use the game of golf as a fun and relaxing way to bring people from different political points of view together for an afternoon of relationship building. It was followed by dinner and a roundtable discussion with Hall of Famers Isaiah Thomas and Tom Izzo, PGA legend and Hall of Famer Lee Trevino, two-time Olympic gold medalist Mia Hamm, and five-time Olympic medalist Alana Myers-Taylor. They discussed how the world of sports and business has evolved and the role it plays in our society. They also shared their personal stories on overcoming adversity, tackling challenges, and achieving incredible, incredible results on and off the sporting stage. Their stories can't help but are, inspire our leaders to come together, bridge divides, and unite in finding common ground for the betterment of our state. Detroit is fortunate to have four professional sports teams with great owners all have contributed significantly to the revitalization of Detroit. And it goes without saying that the rebirth of the city 
would not have been started without the vision and passion of Dan Gilbert. I would also like to thank three of Michigan's native sons, Steve Ballmer, Stephen Ross, and Tom Gorris, for their participation in this year's conference. When I asked each of them if they would attend, they didn't hesitate, not for a minute, as they are true Michiganders through and through. Their commitment to Detroit and the state is unrivaled, and they will soon share with us how they are making a real impact in the region. On a personal level, working with Tom and executing his vision has been a real honor. Every day, every day, I witness how much he cares about improving the lives of others, of leaving this world in a better place than he found it, and always striving in his words, I've heard it a thousand times, to be impactful. Most significantly, we moved the franchise back to the city where it belongs. And we have actively participate, participated in Detroit's revitalization. The most visible aspect is playing our games in Little Caesars Arena. But we have made much more than a game day commitment. We moved the entire franchise downtown building a new training facility and headquarters in the heart of Detroit, and in partnership with Henry Ford Health. Thank you to my good friend, Wright Lassiter. <laughs> so that all of our employees, all of our employees would, be, would become embedded in the life of the city and the community. We also partner with another anchor institution, Detroit's premier public university, Wayne State, to build a new arena that serves as the shared home of Wayne State's men's and women's basketball programs and our NBA G League affiliate, the Motor City Crews. <laughs> Perhaps most importantly, the Pistons have engaged with many civic and charitable organizations, committing millions of dollars to improve the lives of the region's youth and provide them with the foundation for a better future. Just this morning, Tom Gorris announced a $20 million commitment to build a new community center on the city's west side at the Rouge Park Brennan Pool site. <laughs> Tom, being the inclusive and collaborative leader sought out everyone's voice in the organization. Players, coaches, basketball and business personnel, which resulted in the funding of this project. It will truly be the flagship community center in the city and serve a great need for Detroiters in the Cote Rouge area. Of course, in the end, we understand a sports team is ultimately judged by winning which is why we have taken steps to overhaul basketball operations and restore the franchise to competitive greatness. Our roadmap to sustainable success requires rebuilding through the college draft and being strategic in free agency, which is what we are doing. We now have a solid nucleus of young talent to build around, players like Cade Cunningham and Sadiq Bey and the soon-to-be-added fifth pick in the upcoming NBA draft. They all are a part of our long-term solution that will lead us back to contention and have a team that everyone can be proud of. But success on the court is sweetest when balanced alongside success in the community. We believe that corporate statesmanship is part of the long-term solution, not only for revitalizing Detroit, but also for our increasingly divided country. Sports is a microcosm of society and a public testing ground for many of the racial and socioeconomic issues facing our country. It is also a platform that can unite people and serve as a vehicle for change. At a time when our loudest, meanest voices seem to grow in power and prominence, we can no longer afford to be silent.
Inaction is not an option. It's our belief that companies should play a more visible public role in social and political issues. It's our belief that businesses whose leaders publicly stand up for shared values and advocate for issues of consequence to their employees, customers, and other stakeholders generally see a positive impact to their reputation. It's our belief that corporate leaders have an obligation to speak out on matters like racial and gender equity and climate change and then back up statements with tangible actions. In the months since the homicides of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and other people of color at the hands of police, many of our players have spoken personally and poignantly about the grief, trauma, and shattered trust black Americans are experiencing. Rather than surrender to their collective anxiety, they and other team employees have channeled their pain and outrage into plans of action for everything from voting rights to police reform. Two years ago, we turned our practice facility into a voting center that enabled Detroiters to register and vote on site. We have also launched programs that encourage local police to engage in open, honest dialogue with community leaders and black youth. The theme of this conference is the changing role of business in polarizing times. I feel duty bound to use the same unifying spirit that is rooted in sports to bring our political, business, and civic leaders to together to develop greater empathy and build stronger relationships so that we can have a more civil society and better address the challenges that lie before us. Sadly, during these last few weeks, we've witnessed two more senseless and horrific tragedies in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. If there ever was a time, ever was a time, that we need to come together, it's now. And why not start here? <laughs> 